Welcome to the hands-on exercise session where we will interact with the blockchain. So in the previous session, we used our key vault and retrieved a Hydra plugin on it, which allowed us to retrieve Hydra addresses. Now we will take it a step further and populate this key vault with Hydra test coins. So for this, we will delete parts of our code up until the rewind function. As I said before, you only need to initialize the rewind function once because then the key vault will store its state. Now, if we did that, we can start interacting with the blockchain. And in order to do that, we need to import a couple of more modules. The first module that we're going to import is the layer one module, because here is where interaction happens with the blockchain. We can send transfer transactions and other transaction with the API provided by the layer one module. The second, the Second module I would like to include is a network configuration module because this allows to make us a network configuration. And for that, we will also need a network module itself, but it will become clear what we will do with it later on. Now that we have imported these modules, we need a Hydra account where we can request funds to. So we already have a vault and we already have the parameters so what is left is a higher account. And our crypto module specifies a plugin, which we can get, but take care, you can only do this if the higher plugin has been initialized upon the vault. So if you haven't done it, look at our previous video where I explain you how it has to be done. Here, a vault is expected and the parameters of the account. So let's give it to the get method. So now we have a higher account. We still need a target address. Let's find that. And this can be accessed through our higher accounts public interface. And here we will just use the first address. So the zeroth key, and we will need it in a string type. Now that we have a target, we will need a source. For a source, I will have a look at the developer portal, which is also interesting for you because now you can see where I go to look for some additional code examples. Here I have the developer portal in front of me and I will go to tutorial centers. Here you can find additional tutorials where you will also find examples that interact with our technology stack. So now I'm going to go to the first tutorial because I know that I can find the pre-generated wallet passphrase here and I'm going to copy it. And let's get back to our code where we can paste it. Now that we have a target and we have a source, we still need to initialize a method with which we can send transactions. For this, we're going to create an API and this is implemented through an asynchronous call to the layer one module. This layer one module has a create API method, which expects a network configuration. So until now we did not initialize this network for configuration. So let's do that now. A new network configuration can be generated through this network config class, network config class. And this has a from network method, which we're going to use. And this expects a network. So this is all pretty straightforward because the network class gives us a testnet property. Okay, now we can supply the create API with a network config argument. And we see that we still have a small error, which I can get rid of through making our main function asynchronous, since now it will contain asynchronous calls. Now that I have this API, I can use it to send transfer transactions. So let's you do just that. This also happens through an asynchronous call, since now our code will need to send a request to a node, which will give us back a transaction ID. So let's see what kind of methods we have available for us. And here you can see that the transfer transaction has three types. The first method, 
expects a higher private interface, the second expects a passphrase, which is what we have, and the third method expects a wallet import file. Don't worry if you don't understand everything. In the following sessions, I will use different methods to send transactions to the blockchain. Okay, the first argument is a wallet passphrase we got from the developer portal. The target address, and finally the amount. So here it is specified in flakes because Hydra uses eight decimals. This means that Hydra or one Hydra is 10 to the eighth flakes or a hundred million flakes. Therefore the amount is specified as a big integer. And here we're going to give the 10 to the eighth as a value. Okay. Now, as I said before, this call will return us a transaction ID and this transaction ID can be useful if you want to use the block explorer to investigate whether our transaction went through. So here I'm going to do that and I'm going to request the transaction ID to be saved in this variable and now I'm going to log it out. If I log it out, then I will be able to check it in the block explorer. If I log it out, I will be able to check it in the block explorer. Okay, a final thing that I would like to do is adjust our main function so that it follows the then catch specification. Because now it has become asynchronous. And if an error has been caught, I would like to just log it out in the console. Okay, I will save it and now we can run it through npm start. So now we can indeed see that our transaction ID has been printed out in our console. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to go to the test block explorer. So this can be found at test.hydra.iop.global. This is a block explorer for a testnet and if you wanted to find a transaction, we can do it through querying the transaction ID. Let's do that. And if I do it, I can see again the sender, the recipient, and that one hydro has been transferred at this timestamp. So now let's go to the hydro web wallet to see whether we can also see this amount in our wallet. So here you see this familiar interface where I can select a key store file. Now I'm going to select the key vault, open. Now I click on unlock. And if everything is correct, we can see here that indeed our balance has been attributed with one test hydro on the zero address. Okay, so for now, this was it. In the next episode, we're going to see that we can also build on top of this infrastructure other layers. And in specific, we're going to investigate decentralized identifiers and how we can use it for self-sovereign identity systems. See you in the next episode.